today we continue our conversation on being the flow, living meditation, being the embodiment of true self-acceptance. By living meditation, I'm referring to the fact that you are always meditating. This entire experience of life is a meditation as you and the Father are one eternally. Thus, heaven is now and always now. So we've been talking a lot lately about releasing identification. And by that I mean beliefs identified with that are not true and authentic to true way of being. So there may be experiences in life where the individual appears to be attached to a particular outcome. And this attachment seems to generate unnecessary suffering in the form of, let's say, overthinking in an unhelpful way, emotional turbulence, even physical behaviors manifested which we could call unpleasant. Now, these manifestations are the result of identification to particular beliefs. For example, in relationships, let's say a partner were to go on a business trip and the other partner imagines that while the other person is on the business trip, Perhaps they'll meet another person and they will not be faithful to them. Now, even though this is not true and they have a wonderful relationship together, there are these what we can call intrusive thoughts that appear in mind, including emotional responses, as well as some behaviors. Perhaps it turns into accusations. It may even create unnecessary stress, which manifests in business initiatives or the various tasks they do each day. Now, this is an opportunity to release identification because it is a belief identified with in mind that is resulting in these particular appearances and experiences. If that belief was brought to awareness and being brought to awareness, it is released because they realize that they were operating from that belief. They're experiencing life through that belief, which was resulting in attachment. The attachment could present itself as something like they want that other person to stay at home. Only if the other person stays at home, then they feel safe. So they are attached to a particular image of this person, even though this particular image of the person is not true and authentic to who they truly are. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. It is thus not true and authentic to how their partner truly is as well. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Through life experience, awareness is brought to a belief in which there is an opportunity to release it. I want to discuss this further in relation to a wonderful book called The Heavenly Life by James Allen. I came across this book in 2020, summer of 2020, and it was around this time where I received a number of emails where the commonality of all these emails that I received, these particular ones that I'm referring to, revealed identification, identification to a particular outcome, as in if they do not experience this particular outcome, they will not allow themselves to be happy. Revealing the identification to a belief. 
that is resulting in the attachment to a particular outcome based on that belief. They experience what we can call torment as a result of this identification or this attachment. Now, if they acknowledge that they transcend belief identification, they realize what they truly desire is true self-acceptance, which then results in the outer expressions of life being a manifestation of the true self. We call this true self-acceptance. So this book was brought to awareness and I went deeper into it. And I also found that through this book, I experienced deeper realizations of the true nature of thyself. This ended up purifying my mind to a higher degree in which I, as well, within my own mind, released identification to particular beliefs, which resulted in releasing attachment to particular outcomes, which were generating suffering. The attachment to the outcome spawned from beliefs were generating suffering. For example, during that time, it appeared that travel was being restricted. I could only go to particular places. And at that time, I experienced particular beliefs that were not true and authentic to the true way of being. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So I realized that I was identified with things being a particular way to determine whether I can experience happiness, peace, fulfillment. Now, what I truly desired was to do the things that I was doing, connecting with friends, traveling. So at that particular time, I saw that experience as an opportunity to be as I am, unconditional. If I travel, happiness. If I don't travel, happiness. So that way, I can choose to travel. And if appearances change, and let's say travel plans get rearranged, I don't react. And then it results in working out in my favor. I genuinely enjoy to travel. Yet there was an identity formed as a result of identification to a particular belief. And an identity or self-image is made up of beliefs. So it was helpful then to release identification. What ended up happening was I started to experience happiness by being as I am, which is what the book articulated. As a result, I felt happy, blissful, regardless of whether I traveled or not. Now, I ended up traveling. I still travel, yet there's no identification to it like there was before. So this was articulated in the book here in the first part where he said, life is simple. Being is simple. The universe is simple. Now, when I read it at the time, I realized that I was not understanding what he meant by being is simple. Because I experienced reactivity in relation to what he was saying. When he was saying life is simple, being is simple, I said, well, certainly I experience it simple in some regards, and in other regards, I don't experience it as simple. Yet the statement of life is simple, being is simple, is written in a very absolute way. And so I wanted to understand what he truly meant by that. And so I came across a lot of information, for example, Advaita Vedanta and other schools, uh, self-knowledge, knowledge of the self. And the next part started to connect the two together where he says, complexity arises in ignorance and self-delusion. 
looking through the woven network of their own illusions. They see interminable complication and unfathomable mystery, and so loses themselves in the labyrinths of their own making. Let us put away egotism, and we will see the universe in all the beauty of its pristine simplicity. Let them annihilate the delusion of the personal I, and they will destroy all the illusions which spring from that I. They will thus re-become little children and will revert to original simplicity. I've been saying this a lot. There's only God, only God appearing, only God animating all that appears through the individual mind. So we call upon God through prayer. What do we say of that I am? The individual appears to pray, and the individual is an appearance to and from God. So the delusion of the personal I, the way I relate to it, is the belief that the I is separate from the Father even though it says clearly in the Bible, I and my Father are one. And the illusions which spring from that I are the identification to appearances seeking for approval, validation, confirmation of being that already. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So the shift occurs through this realization and then the journey then appears as one of releasing identification. That's why I titled the mind map, The Apparent Journey of Releasing Identification. So in summary thus far, number one, self-realization. Number two, understanding the true nature of that self and actualizing the true nature of that self. And also, as mentioned, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for example. In the later stages, he talked about self-transcendence. So self-transcendence is what James Allen is referring to when he said, let him annihilate the delusion of the personal I, and he will destroy all the illusions which spring from that I. We realize we are one with all, and thus see all as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment which manifests accordingly as the outer expressions of life. Harmonious, wonderful relationships, harmonious, wonderful experiences on the journey of actualizing the definite major purpose in life, and a continuum of this inspiration. And we also notice that our presence reflects as others also experiencing that realization self-knowledge and actualization of that self and also self-transcendence. At that point, life is experienced as everything happens ideally automatically, more so each day in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. As stated in the Bible, not my will, but thine be done. So we talk a lot about in our Neville Goddard conversation that the way we release identification to an outcome is to accept that we are that. We already have. Desire means having. Anytime a desire arises, I have it. That's what I realized was happening on my business journey, relationships, etc. All the different definite chief aims from Think and Grow Rich, I set definite chief aims I've ever committed to, I actualized. And I realized that all of those definite chief aims were authentic expressions of the true self. They, we could say, reformed the self-image to be one with the true self. So we could say then, true self-image. When I would read this book, and particularly I would listen to the audio book, I would listen to it over and over again while I would run. And then I would have these moments of stillness where I wouldn't think. 
And I enjoy thinking, certainly creative thinking in relation to the entrepreneurial journey, produces products, services, operational efficiencies, benefits for my business, my clients, etc. Yet these moments of stillness brought forth profound realization. Realization of the true nature of self, being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. It was during these moments where mind was purified. Also, it was during these moments where the still, small voice that speaks from clarity arises and provides the auto-suggestions, which I would take and I would record or I would say them to myself with self-talk and mind would further purify. And this particular personal identity here results in being aligned with the true self. So then a person lives on purpose. And part of this is the releasing of the identification to attachment to appearances, which is spawned by beliefs in which this identity is made up of. These beliefs result in the relationship, for example, if we work with the Robert Dills model, with our capabilities, which is our skills, behaviors, and environment. It manifests as the appearances of capabilities, behaviors, and environment. And by that, I mean, it was also around that time when I learned how to snowboard. And I got the opportunity to put this into practice. So the way I put it into practice was I imagine myself cultivating this skill in a harmonious way. And what I mean by that is enjoying and not becoming frustrated if I wasn't making progress as fast enough or perfectionism, rather enjoying the nuances of skill cultivation. So what was experienced then is I would go to the slopes and sometimes I would go in the morning and I would go in the evening as well, twice a day, and practice. And I would enjoy it. And at the end of the day, I would watch a handful of videos on YouTube and learn different techniques. And I would just repeat this again, again, and again. And sure enough, I was experiencing bliss to a higher degree, love, fulfillment, happiness, peace with the experience, one with the experience. And there wasn't any identification that was resulting in resistance to skill cultivation. The beliefs in mind were purified so there was no attachment to a particular outcome that would be, for example, if the belief said, if I don't achieve a certain degree of progress, then be upset because of this other person that is doing it on YouTube and they are appearing to progress faster. That's identification to a belief a belief of lack of true self-acceptance. So the way I relate to this is the degree of true self-acceptance, being as you are, is proven in equation on the day-to-day -day journey with whatever it is that you're experiencing. And in relation to whatever you're experiencing, we have the opportunity to, if there is identification, release that identification. And... We can release identification in that moment. If one is about to become identified with a belief, which they experience perhaps some signs prior to the identification, maybe thoughts start arising in mind, maybe emotions are experienced a particular way, maybe there are certain behaviors, maybe tension. In that moment, be still and know that I am. And mind is purified. Now, if identification persists, what we can do is ask ourselves the question, what was this appearance bringing awareness to? The outer expressions of life can be tracked back to 
the identification in mind. We ask ourselves the question, is this true? You know truth, self-realization. That which you are is truth. You realize self being still. That's what he means by life is simple. You are life. You exist beyond the beliefs in mind. Being is simple. By being as you are, mind is purified. The beliefs are released. Thoughts clear up. Emotions are allowed to be. Body relaxes. And so when he said complexity arises in ignorance and self-delusion, self-delusion is in those particular moments forgetting that you transcend those particular experiences. So when he said looking through the woven network of their own illusions, one sees interminable complication and unfathomable mystery and loses themselves in the labyrinth of their own making. They forget being one with the Father, the cause and substance of the entire phenomena of life. So, what do we do? Like he says here, put away egotism, be still. Acknowledge that the personal I is an emanation of that I am. That I am, which transcends I, appears as all, including the individuals that appear and animates all that appears. And so the personal I may be identified with beliefs that result in external seeking or attachment to external conditions, which is not what they truly desire. What they truly desire is being as they are. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I like how Ramana Maharshi said it one time. He said, happiness is your true nature. It is not wrong to desire it. So the individual that appears, our individual self, the I, the I may appear to seek for happiness. Nothing wrong with desiring happiness. The I may as a result seek for happiness in appearances. No shame, no condemnation. And the I acknowledges that I and the Father are one. I thus finds the kingdom, the source of all happiness, the eternal source of happiness. And as a result, the seeking stops in this regard. And from this happiness is being experienced always now, wherever they appear to be. And then I can no longer form identification in that regard. In that regard, I is free. And happiness is experienced with the particular experiences. And this happens from my experience and many that I've worked with in increasing frequency on a continuous basis in relation to whatever a person is doing, who they're with, etc., wherever they are. They naturally feel unconditional happiness and experience it with whatever it is that they're doing. I have found actually that it released identification to so many beliefs, so many beliefs that were conditions that I was placing conditions if this outcome then I'm happy if the other outcome happens then I'm not happy released identification to so many of those beliefs by simple acceptance capture the feeling of being you are that how do you capture the feeling of being being as you are still and what I find is I can sit still being as I am 
I could also move, have this conversation with you, do all my various initiatives each day being as I am. Certainly stillness, sitting perfectly still. Also, during physical movement, I experience it while running. Flow. Also, during experiencing emotions. Flow. Also, while thinking, such as flow-based conversations, like the one we're having right now. This one, I just had a few ideas and I wanted to share my experience. I don't have a script. Yet, I know that what I'm communicating right now is from experience. And thus it resonates. Because you are experience. Thus, you and I are no different. So the individual I seeks love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. What is being encouraged here is the kingdom of heaven is within. Find it within. By capturing the feeling of being by being still and knowing that I am. Immediately you feel it. You feel, I have. Now, in the earlier stages, this was challenging for me. I would then look for visible signs, approval, validation, or confirmation of being. And so let's say I said, I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Before, I would look around and say, where is it? This person didn't call me, thus... I don't have it, or I'm not having this experience or that experience, thus I am not happiness. These particular thoughts were arising from identification to a particular belief which suggested that love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment needs to be found through visible effects. So through the auto-suggestions of I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, I feel it more so each day wherever I am, regardless of appearances. Wherever I am, I experience that. And through the experience of that, everything appears accordingly. Thoughts, emotions, behaviors, everything flows automatically from the realization that I am that. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. What ended up happening was, sure enough, it started to become easier and easier to experience fulfillment regardless of appearances. It also resulted in being easier, as we discussed in our Neville Goddard conversations, to disentangle the mind from the evidence of the senses. So, within mind, there are beliefs. Mind, in essence, is blank. A child is born into this world, mind is blank. In relation to appearances and experiences, a child thinks and forms beliefs in relation to those experiences, such as, if this person leaves me, then I am not happy. And that could play out in the various relationships in their life. When they acknowledge that that is belief identification resulting in that attachment, awareness is brought to the belief and they realize that I am. Happiness, love, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Now they're experiencing joy, bliss, happiness because they have. They acknowledge that they have. So, what ends up happening then is it automatically manifests as, and this has been my experience as well, and many that I've worked with, as wonderful, harmonious relationships, wonderful, harmonious friendships, wonderful, harmonious experiences, businesses, etc. What is occurring is, as we discussed when we refer to psychocybernetics, the self image, or in the Robert Diltz model, the identity is being reformed to be one with the true self. The identification to the beliefs that are not true and authentic to the true self are being released. And it's a meditation. The living meditation practice is simple. And it starts to become easier and easier with practice. 
as I always say, relax into the flow. Let's actually discuss that. Relax into the flow. Let's look at it from that perspective. If identification is about to arise, which is apparent in thoughts, doubt, uncertainty, fear, we could say, in relation to a particular belief, or emotions are experienced a particular way, I personally don't label emotions as negative, as emotions are energy in motion. Thus, there's nothing wrong with experiencing emotions. And so what ends up happening then, as a result of letting thoughts and emotions be, without identifying with them, true self-acceptance, being still, and mind is purified. The belief in mind that was generating that experience has been released. True self-acceptance. As mentioned, this is a practice in relation to the different aspects of life. They show up in capability, skill cultivation, behaviors, environment, etc. It could be in relationships, personal relationships, the various tasks on your business journey. For example, I work a lot with sales professionals to help them release identification to beliefs that result in the sales process appearing to generate unnecessary resistance from the attachment to an outcome. It's the belief in relation to the various experiences and aspects of the entire process from prior to the conversation, during the conversation, and after the conversation that is revealing the identification to not being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment in relation with another person who can benefit greatly from the product or service being offered. We release that identification and they flow in the conversation. They enjoy sales. They enjoy communication. This is true, I found, for any experience in life. Any experience that I genuinely desire to experience. True self-expression. We can call that true self-expression, being as I am playing out as the outer expressions of life from that which I am, manifested as a definite major purpose. Now, I would like to further discuss this in the upcoming videos and put more emphasis on this. When he says life is simple, being is simple, the universe is simple. To clarify, he said, complexity arises in ignorance and self-delusion. You transcend the beliefs that the individual I is identified with. I and my father are one, truly. Accepting that, he says, we re-become a little child and revert to original simplicity. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, being as I am, simple acknowledgement of that manifests as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment that I am. Others appear, experiences appear to reflect true self-acceptance that I am in and as the various experiences of life. As outer expressions of life are celebrations of God in the childlike original simplicity way. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.